Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV. The Linux Crash Course series is a never-ending series of tutorials that just goes on and on and on, probably because there's just no shortage of things to teach you when it comes to Linux. And in every video, one video at a time, I teach you an important Linux-related concept. And today, well, that journey brings us to Flatpak. As far as what Flatpak is, Flatpak is a universal package format, not unlike Snap or App Image, for example. It's one of the three that are, you know, vying for world domination or something like that. Flat packs are a very unique take on application delivery. And what I'm going to do is show you exactly how they work, how you can go about installing flat pack support if you don't already have that on your distro. It's going to be a ton of fun. But before we get into that, though, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, RocketChat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's episode. I really appreciate it. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's dive into the concept of Flatpak and see what it's all about. Now, real quick, I just want to give you an overview of what a universal package is in the first place, because that's at the heart and soul of what Flatpak is. Universal packages aim to ease some of the burdens that developers and users face while developing or using applications on Linux. One of the biggest challenges for users in particular, especially the non-technical ones, is the sad but true reality that many popular applications just aren't ported officially to Linux. Sure, the situation is much better now, but it's not completely resolved either. Developers, on the other hand, might decide not to port an application to Linux due to the complexity of the platform. Think of it this way. Are you using Debian, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Mint, Arch, Red Hat, Fedora, MX Linux, Gentoo, or something even more exotic? I'm sure whatever your distribution of choice happens to be, you've made a great choice and it probably works very well for you. But developers have no idea what you're running, and the average Windows app developer has no idea what any of that means. In fact, when a developer looks into porting something to Linux, they probably give up the minute you start to even mention the fact that multiple distributions exist. The solution? The universal package format. Universal packages, in theory and or in a perfect world depending on how you look at things, aim to be a type of application package that's not unlike deb, rpm, or so on, but it's a package format that multiple distributions can all support. With the universal package, it contains all of the dependencies that the application needs in that one package, rather than requiring dependency resolution. Also, universal apps are largely assumed to be containers, which is a myth I want to bust right now. Don't get me wrong, apps released in such a format can very well be containers in every sense of the word, but that doesn't mean they all are. Since universal apps are separate from, and sometimes even excluded from, the host operating system, many people assume that universal apps are built in a way where they're completely siloed from the operating system in a way that increases security. That is often the case, but not always. Therefore, universal apps will either give you a huge security benefit or sometimes no security benefit at all. Now here's the thing. The universal package format is a real thing. It's not a theory. It exists today and it's something you can use right now. So what's the world like now that we have universal packages? Are we in a state of Linux packaging zen? Well, no. What we have are three competing technologies that are competing for the top spot, while Ubuntu is very, 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 very eager to see their solutions succeed. You really can't make this stuff up. 
Now that we understand what universal packages are, what exactly is Flatpak and how does that fit in? Well, much like universal apps in general, Flatpaks provide an alternative package type that's not tied to the underlying distribution's package manager. Any applications you install that are provided in the Flatpak format are separate from the underlying distribution. However, there are plugins available for software management apps, such as GNOME Software, for example, that integrate it along with other apps that are available. For end users, one of the main benefits here is that the Flatpak technology gives them access to newer versions of their favorite applications than what their distribution provides in the official repositories. One example of this is LibreOffice and Debian 12, which is currently at version 7.4 as of the time I'm filming this. However, LibreOffice has had a major new version since then, so if you want the newest version of LibreOffice, then Flatpak is the only way that you can get it on Debian, or at least one of the easier ways. As for support, some distributions include support for Flatpaks built right in, while others you have to install that format yourself. Thankfully, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is go to the flatpak.org website, click the setup button, and you'll see a page with a bunch of Linux distro icons. What you do is you click on the icon that represents your distro, and you'll see instructions specific for that distro when it comes to adding Flatpak support. Even if your distribution has Flatpak built in, it'll mention that right on the site. For example, Flatpak support is built right in when it comes to Fedora. Ubuntu, on the other hand, requires you to install a package in order to set it up. Once you install Flatpak, then you are able to run applications that are packaged in that format. But the majority of Flatpaks come from one central repository, the FlatHub repository, which is something that you add separately. Flatpak itself doesn't require FlatHub, it's just FlatHub has so many applications inside of it that there's just no reason not to install it. So after installing Flatpak itself, you'll add that repository to your system. Optionally, if your distribution includes GNOME software for its main graphical package management utility, you can install another package that will integrate Flatpak within GNOME software. When you do that, you'll see a dropdown anytime an application is available in multiple formats, allowing you to select your distribution's version or the Flatpak version. In addition to installing Flatpaks via a graphical package manager, you can also install Flatpaks on the command line with the Flatpak command. It's fairly straightforward as well, with most commands being self-explanatory. For example, the most basic usage goes something like this. Flatpak, install, and then the package name. And most apps seem to follow a similar naming scheme, and the best way I've found to look these up is to go to the Flathub website in your browser and search for packages there. When you find one that you want to install, you'll see the package name closer to the bottom, you'll see the installation command, and you'll also see the command that's required to run the application. For most people, you can ignore the command that's used to run the application, reason being, applications installed via Flatpak will create an applications menu shortcut for you, so just like any other application, all you have to do is go to your app launcher, find the icon there for the Flatpak that you've installed, and then, well, click on it and launch it. In fact, unless you dig a bit deeper, Flatpaks integrate well with the rest of your apps and shouldn't stand out as anything different. Also, in regard to the FlatHub website, the Flatpaks available there are packaged either by community members or by the application vendor themselves. For example, as of the time I'm recording this, Google Chrome is offered on FlatHub, but it wasn't packaged by Google. Instead, it's a wrapper created by a community member that facilitates adding Google Chrome to your system. On the other hand, Firefox is also offered on FlatHub, but that version is created and supported by Mozilla themselves. In fact, while you browse Flathub, look out for the verified tag on applications. If a Flatpak has that tag, then that means that the Flatpak was either created by the original vendor or by an entity approved by the vendor. You should always take this information into consideration when using Flatpak. Now, a common question that I get is where do Flatpaks store their configuration? I mean, think about it. Most of the time when you use apps on the Linux desktop, the configuration files are going to be stored somewhere under .config. In the case of Firefox, it's under .mozilla. So we generally know where to find this configuration, but when it comes to Flatpaks, that information is stored in a different location. So where can I find the information or the config files for apps that are installed via Flatpak? Well, that's pretty straightforward, actually. If you utilize a Flatpak application, its config is also stored underneath your home directory, not unlike any other application, it's just going to be found underneath a different directory. If you enable the viewing of hidden files, you should see a .var directory in your home directory, and underneath that, you should see a folder for each Flatpak that you have installed. And that's where your configuration is. So if you wanted to modify or automate the configuration of Flatpaks, the .var directory is the directory that you're looking for. 
If you plan on using Flatpak, then what I recommend is that you install the FlatSeal application. FlatSeal is itself a flat pack, but what it allows you to do is modify permissions of other flat packs, and that pretty much makes it essential. Similar to apps on smartphones, each individual flat pack can only access resources that they've been given permission for. A good example of this is a web browser. If you're trying to access a remote meeting service within your browser, and your browser is delivered via flat pack, then your microphone and webcam will only work within that browser if it's been given access to those resources. And what FlatSeal does is it provides a one-stop shop for granting or restricting permissions of individual flat packs. So if a particular flat pack is problematic, it could be possible that it doesn't have permission to do something that it's trying to do. Within FlatSeal, you can grant the application permission for whatever it is you want to provide it. It's also probably a good idea to audit with FlatSeal every now and then to make sure that no application has access to something that it shouldn't. So now let's switch gears and take a look at the process of managing flat packs, specifically managing them with the flat pack command. When you install support for flat packs, you get the flat pack command, so let's see how to use it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the fact that flat packs can be installed as a user or system wide. Flat packs installed system wide are available for every user on the system. So basically, if you install the Thunderbird Flatpak, for example, and you install it in system mode, then every user you add to the system will see that in their app menu. And in case you're curious, system mode is the default. On the other hand, if you install a Flatpak in user mode, then that Flatpak is installed for you and only you. In the case of Thunderbird, if you install that in user mode, then another user who also wants to use Thunderbird will need to install it as well. And yes, that means you could have the same application installed more than once. This might be one of the reasons why system mode is the default. Anyway, with that in mind, let's check out a few examples of the Flatpak command in action. First, let's look at searching for packages. Of course, you can search Flatpaks from within the FlatHub repository website pretty easily, but for those of you that prefer the command line, here's what you could do. You could run Flatpak search and then a search term. If there's a match to the search term that you've provided, you'll see results within your terminal. That way, you can see what the name of the package is that you're looking for. Once you find it, to install a flat pack, you could then run flat pack, install, and then the name of the package. When you do that, the application is being installed system-wide by default, like I mentioned, so if you prefer to install an application in user mode, then to do that, you can add the dash dash user option, just like this. So the command becomes flat pack dash dash user and then install along with the name of the package. If you want to remove a package, the command becomes flatpak uninstall and then the name of the package. Keep in mind though that if you install the flatpak in user mode, then you'll have to remove it in user mode as well. That means you'll have to provide the dash dash user option in addition to the flatpak uninstall command in order to remove a package. In addition to installing individual apps, updating existing apps is fairly easy as well. What you do is run flatpak update. And what that'll do is update all the flat packs that you currently have installed. If you want to update user installed flat packs, you could do that as your user account by running flat pack dash dash user along with update. And that'll update all the flat packs that you've installed in user mode. Another thing to know about the flat pack technology is that it uses runtimes. Runtimes are installed automatically if they're needed, so you don't have to manage installing these yourself. But sometimes when a flat pack application is updated, it will require and automatically install an updated runtime as well. But after some time, these runtimes can start to build up. And here's how you deal with that. Every now and then, you can run the following command to clean up any runtimes you may have that are no longer being used. You simply run flatpak uninstall dash dash unused. And what this command will do is search your system for flatpak runtimes that are installed, specifically ones that are no longer being used by anything, and it'll remove those. You can do the same thing in user mode as well by running flatpak dash dash user uninstall dash dash unused along with the package name. Going forward though, many desktop environments are going to handle the cleanup of runtimes for you, so this isn't something that you should have to deal with all that much longer. Recent versions of GNOME, for example, will go ahead and clean these out for you in the background. So again, we'll just go ahead and audit this every now and then ourselves for now, but in the future, we really shouldn't have to contend with that. Now in this video, I covered the basics of Flatpak to get you up and running with it if it's something that you want to check out. Even if not, well, now you know what it is and what all the fuss is about. 
Now we just went over the basics in this video, but this is not the end of flat pack coverage on this channel. I don't know when, but eventually I'll have even more videos about flat pack, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime though, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Be sure to click that like button if you like this video, and I'll see you in the next video.